Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. The title of today's Bible study is Should a Christian be a member of a denomination? Now, before we go into the scriptures to find the answer to the question, should a Christian be a member of a denomination? I'd like to talk a little bit briefly about denominations. For example, in the so-called Christianity religion, you have the Baptists, the Catholics, the Protestants, the Pentecostals. Then you have the Jehovah Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, the Mormons, and the list goes on and on and on. Well, denominations are not biblical, okay? You will find nowhere in the Holy Bible any scripture that endorses any of these man-made so-called religious organizations. So... You have people who believe wholeheartedly that their denomination is the true church of God, but there's nothing in the Bible that supports that. Okay. So I want to start this particular Bible study with a couple of verses found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And there the Apostle Paul, being guided by the Spirit, wrote these words to Timothy, and for our benefit as well. He says, all scripture... It's given by inspiration of God. That word inspiration means God breathed it into existence. It came out of God's mouth, in other words. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, which means teaching, for reproof, which means to reprove somebody, for correction, to correct somebody, for instruction in righteousness. In other words, the scriptures help us know exactly what God considers righteousness is. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So if you call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ, you're supposed to be going by his word, the Holy Bible. And so the Bible, like I said, does not endorse anybody's denomination, period. But the Bible also tells us that we're not supposed to add anything to the word of God. And this is important because in most so-called denominations of the religion Christianity, you will find that they have the Holy Bible, but they have some tradition that they follow as well, or some other teaching that is not part of the Bible. For example, like the Church of Jesus Christ in the Latter-day Saints, which is the Mormons, they have the Book of Mormon, but the Book of Mormon is not part of the Bible. In the Seventh-day Adventist, they have the teachings of one Ellen G. White, supposed, to, supposed teachings, because it's been proven the woman was a plagiarist. So a lot of stuff in her so-called books that she claimed was inspired by God, she stole from real scholars who were living during the time she was living. Anyway, they got this extra teaching. And, and then you got people who just have their own version of the Bible. Like in the Jehovah Witness, they have the New World Translations of the Holy Scripture. So they're adding to God's Word with these other teachings. And the Holy Bible, which is the inspired Word of God, says in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, Ye, or 
you shall not add unto the word which I command you. This is God talking. Neither shall ye or you diminish aught from it. Don't add to it. Don't take nothing from it. That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. So we're not supposed to add anything to God's word. And so this is what stamps those denominations disqualified as far as God is concerned when they have some extra doctrine or extra teaching. In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6, King Solomon, being guided by the Spirit of God, wrote, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Verse 6, Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. You see that? So under no circumstance are we supposed to accept some extra teaching. And so that's one of the main reasons a real follower of Jesus Christ should not be a part of one of these, these denominations. Anyway, even in the last prophetic book, Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19, we have this warning about adding. Revelation 22, verse 18 and 19 reads, For I testify, that means I bear witness, unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, referring specifically to the book of Revelation now. If any man add unto these things, the things written in the book of Revelation, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, referring to the last letter, the book of Revelation, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Now, this is Jesus warning us about adding to his word. Now, you can do it if you want, and you can believe in the extra teachings of these denominations if you want to, but you're going to end up in a bad way if you do. True followers of Christ, true worshipers of the one true God, the Father Jehovah, His Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We go by the Holy Bible, period. Because we know that that and that alone is God's inspired word. Jesus said in Matthew 4.4, 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So you'll find in these denominations, they kind of, practice salad bar Christianity when it comes to the, the uh, Holy Bible. They pick and choose what they want from the word and they leave the rest. Well, Christ said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's why you have to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And you cannot trust some man or men, or organization, or woman, with your salvation. It's okay to listen to preachers and study with Bible teachers like me, but you still need to study for yourself. And the purpose of my videos is to get you into the Word of God. And I pray that you become a student of the Word of God. That's what I want to see happen, because too many people in these false Religious organizations, they come and they sit down and they trust what they're going to learn from their teacher to be the truth without ever going back to check it out for themselves. That's why I put the scriptures right on the screen because I want the emphasis to be on the word of God and not on me. Anyway, we're supposed to live by every word that comes out of God's mouth. Now, when we go to Matthew 15, we see how the denomination of the scribes and Pharisees, the false teachers of Christ's time, had replaced God's word with their tradition. And this is happening even to this day. Verse 1 says, Then came to Jesus scribes, those are people who hand copied the law because they didn't have printing press back in this time, and Pharisees. This was a religious sect which were of Jerusalem, they came from Jerusalem, saying, verse 2, Why do thy disciples, why do your disciples, Jesus Christ, 
transgressed the tradition of the elders. How come your disciples don't follow our tradition? Which is a stupid question. The answer to that question would be because they're my disciples. They're not yours. Anyway, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. They have some stupid tradition where they say you got to scrub your arms and your, your hands and everything real good before you eat bread. And he said, why they're not following that? Verse 3. But he, that is Jesus, answered and said unto them, why do ye, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Why do you transgress, which means to break God's commandment by your tradition? Why are you putting your teachings over God's teachings, in other words? He says in verse 4, for God commanded, saying, honor your father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Jesus gave him a little Bible lesson now. He says in verse 5, But ye, but you say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. That's verse 5, verse 6. And honor not his father or his mother shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. So he said, you coming up to me asking me why my disciples don't wash their hands and their arms and keep your tradition. He said, you taking your traditions and replace the word of God with them. The Bible says, honor your mother and your father. And you telling people to take their last money instead of going to help their own mother and father and give it to the church and then you tell them they're going to be free if they do this he said no you have made the commandment of god of none effect by your tradition and this is happening all over the world traditions of men taking the place of the word of god like for example they celebrate a pagan holiday every 25th of december called christmas which they claim is the birthday of Jesus Christ. And nothing could be further from the truth. You know, they have all kinds of tradition that had their root in paganism. And they teach them as doctrine. And if you don't know your Bible, you go along with it. And so that's an example of modern day people using traditions to replace the word of God. Jesus said in verse 7, ye hypocrites. You hypocrites. The word hypocrite means a pretender, like an actor on a stage. You phonies. You hypocrites, he says. Well did Isaiah, which is Isaiah, prophesy of you, saying, verse 8, This people draw nigh, which means near, unto me with their mouth, and honors me with their lips. But their heart, which is their mind, is far from me. He says, they're giving me a lot of lip service. That's all it is. But they don't really love me. Their heart is far from me, which is their mind. He says in verse 9, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So they're wasting their time. And many of the denominations are wasting their time. Because they don't stick to our Father's word and they're practicing the traditions of men and just outright false doctrine. Things that are not part of our Father's word. And then there are those who take the scripture and twist them and put their own spin on it and give it a new meaning. They're wasting their time. Brothers and sisters, you got to know the word of God and you got to stick to the word of God. Because if you don't, you're going to be lost. All right? In 2 John chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, this is very important now. Pay attention. The Apostle John writes there, being guided by God's Spirit, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine, which means the teaching, of Christ has not God. You see that? If you don't stick exclusively to the teachings of the Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you don't have God. He says, he that abideth, that means to remain in, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. So if you know the Bible and you're living by the Holy Bible, 
you have a relationship with the Father, Jehovah, and his son, Jesus Christ, whose true name in the Hebrew tongue is Yeshua HaMashiach, and the Father's name in Hebrew is Yehovah. You have a relationship with the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you know the word and if you're living by the word. Okay? He says in verse 10, if there come any unto you. Now we're about to get the answer to the question, should Christians be a member of a denomination? Here's the answer. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine. What doctrine? The teachings of Jesus Christ from Genesis to Revelation. If any come to you and they don't bring this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Don't let them through your front door and don't even wish them well. Don't even pray for God to bless them. 11. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. You see how serious doctrine is to God? He says, if they don't have the Bible and the Bible only as their doctrine, you're not supposed to even let them come through your front door. And that means on your house, on your business, if you uh, belong to a local church where you have gotten money together and y'all got a building and they come in with some other doctrine, they're not welcome there. And neither are you supposed to ask God to bless them. That's how serious it is. So the answer to the question, what should a Christian be a part of a denomination, is no way, baby. No way. I told some uh, uh, Seventh-day Adventist people I know, they say they call themselves Seventh-day Adventist Christians. I say impossible. You cannot be a Seventh-day Adventist and a Christian. Just like you cannot be a Baptist and a Christian or a Pentecostal and a Christian and a Lutheran and a Christian and a Methodist and a Christian and a Jehovah Witness and a Christian. You cannot be a part of some man-made uh, religious system with, that has false doctrine woven into it and be a Christian. No, you can't. No way. It is not biblical. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. So true Christians are not a part of anybody's denomination. Now let me clarify. There are some Christians who are affiliated with denominations, but if you ask them, they will tell you they put no stake in it whatsoever. They don't even claim it. They're there because they feel God has let them to be there. There are a lot of Christians in Christianity, true Christians, who are there on a mission from God to plant seeds of truth and try to get people into the Bible. I am not talking about them. I'm talking about the ones who have been deceived by the devil to think that they can embrace this man-made religion inspired by demons and grab onto Christ too. Uh-uh can't do it. So if you wholeheartedly believe in the, the, the denomination that you're part of and the religion that you're part of that the Bible makes no mention of, you have been deceived thoroughly. The Bible tells us in, that we have to be doers of God's word. You know, it's not just there for play. It's not there for show. This book is a book of instructions. The basic instructions before leaving earth. Somebody made up that acronym for the word Bible. And it's true. James 1, 22, the apostle James wrote, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. So if you're a person who just wants to go to church, what you call church, to get a little spiritual entertainment, you hear the want to hear the good word, but you're not going to go back and study to see if what you heard was right, and then you're not going to try to live by it, you are deceiving yourself. You might as well not go. And Romans 2, 13, Paul writes there, For not the hearers of the law are just, which means justified, which means declared righteous before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So you got to be a doer of God's word. 
In Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 21, Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He says in verse 22, Many will say to me in that day. What day? Judgment day. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. So we see these people are supposed to be followers of Christ because they call him Lord. And they're going to tell them on Judgment Day what they did for him. Verse 23. And then Jesus says, Will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now imagine all those millions of so-called followers of Jesus Christ in, in these ungodly, devil-inspired groups called denominations coming up on Judgment Day talking about what they did for him. And he tells them, I never knew you. Get out of my face. Beat it. Whoo, that's going to be heavy. And then they're going into the lake of fire after that. He tells us why he's going to say that to them. Verse 24. Jesus says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine. Get that. Not some man-made false religion, but the sayings of the Bible, the things I said. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. Remember, you have to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Whosoever hear, hears these sayings of mine and does them, in other words, I will liken him or I will compare him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock, Jesus says. Verse 25. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. So Christ says the people that hear the sayings of his and put them into practice, they're on a solid foundation. And when the storm winds come, they shall be able to stand. Okay? He says in verse 26, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. The ones who hear my sayings and choose the traditions of men instead of my sayings as doctrine, he says, shall be likened or compared unto a foolish man which, which built his house upon the sand. 27, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. You're not on a solid foundation if your doctrine isn't the doctrine of Christ. If you believe in one of these false organizations and, and you embrace the false teachings of that organization, you're wasting your time. You're on your way to hell. You better get into the Bible and let the Bible get into you. He says in verse 28, and it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Wow. Verse 29, it says, For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And the reason why he taught them as one having authority, because he is the only one who has the authority to tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing. Okay? So it's very important, brothers and sisters, that you study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's no getting around that. So where did these denominations come from? How did they start? Well, the Bible clearly tells us where they came from. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28 to 31, the apostle Paul said something, being guided by the Spirit, that helps us understand where these denominations came from. Verse 28, Paul says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, he's talking to the leaders in the church, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he, that is God, has purchased with his own blood. He says in verse 29, For I know this, Paul says, that after my departing, after I die, or after I'm put to death for Christ, shall grievous wolves, that's false teachers, 
enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So Paul says, after I die, Satan's going to send in his false teachers and they're going to tear this church up like wolves attacking a flock of sheep. Verse 30, he says, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So this is how we got all these denominations. False teachers attack the church of Jesus Christ, bring in their false doctrine, and stupid people went along with it. And then there were people who started out as true followers of Christ, who the devil inspired to start their own little cliques. And that's why you got so many denominations in Christianity and, and the false religion of Islam and Hinduism and all the false religions. Because the devil always manipulates someone to try to get people to come and follow them. They want praise and glory for themselves just like the devil did. That's why Satan rebelled against God. So that's why we got all these false organizations today. They're all false. Okay? Because if they were sticking to God's word, they would not be calling themselves uh, Catholics or Baptists or Lutherans or Methodists or, you know, whatever. They would not be calling themselves that. Now, I'm going to tell you what we're supposed to call ourselves from the scripture at the end of this Bible study. And we're almost done. So he says this is what was going to happen after he died. He said in verse 31, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. He says, I've been telling you this for three years that Satan is going to attack the church and, and, and really mess it up. And that's why I don't belong to nobody's church except God's church. And that's not a building on the corner, by the way. The church are the true believers who go by the Holy Bible wherever God has them. That's the church of Jesus Christ. Okay? None of these denominations with this different name and these different doctrines belong to Christ. Because if they did, they wouldn't be calling themselves that. Anyway, Peter said the same thing. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Peter says, but there were false prophets also among the people. Talking about Israel of old. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Talking about the church of Jesus Christ. Who pithily, which means secretively, shall bring in damnable heresies. That's unorthodox teachings. You see that? Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And this is what has happened today. Verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. The word pernicious means something that will lead you to your ruin. Many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. And because so many people are going to be caught up in this deception, they will speak ill of the word of God. They will tell you the Bible is not right. <laughs> Verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with feign words or with lies make merchandise of you whose judgment now the long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. And this is exactly what you see happening today in Christianity and all these false denominations. And you, you got the, all these big mega church preachers lying to people with this false prosperity doctrine. How They tell people if you give God some money, God going to give you... Give, give you more money. In other words, if you give me, God's man, money, then God's going to give you more money. Well, that's not biblical. That's a lie from the fiery pits of hell. And you got people like T.D. Jakes preaching it and making a fool out of the stupid people in his congregation. You got people like Creflo Dollar preaching this and making a fool out of the people in his congregation. And you got Joyce Myers and Kenneth Copeland and Joe Osteen and Benny Hinn, all these big mega church preachers lying to people about how if they give money to their church, God's going to bless them. And then they make merchandise out of them because they sell them their book, their CD, and anything else they can sell. Them. Just like the Bible said it would happen. But if you know the scripture, then you will not be a victim of this deception. So does God really care if you join a de denomination? We need, we need to have an answer to that question. Well, 
1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 to 5, the Apostle Paul, being guided by the Spirit of God, wrote these words to Timothy for his benefit and for ours as well. He says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 to 5, If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine, which means teaching, which is according to godliness, verse 4, Paul says he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions, that's hankering after questions, and strives of words, arguments of words, whereof or of which cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Five, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. So here's Paul telling you that you cannot be a part of some man-made, demon-inspired denomination. You can't do it. He says, stay away from them. They don't stick to the words of Jesus Christ, only stay away from them. And so my brothers and sisters, as I promised, I am now going to reveal what you and I are supposed to refer to ourselves as, as according to Scripture. And in Acts 11, verse 26, the Bible tells us, And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians. First in Antioch. So that's what you and I are supposed to be. Christians. Not a Christian and a Seventh-day Adventist, a Christian and a Baptist, and a Christian and a Catholic, and a Christian and a Lutheran. No, just a Christian. And the word Christian means a follower of Christ. Period. What about our religion? Our religion is Jesus Christ. He is our Lord and Savior, and that's who we worship and serve. That's our religion, if you need a religion so bad. But isn't that what Christianity is? No, it's not. It's not biblical. And you saw from the scripture, it says, don't add nothing to the word and don't take nothing from the word. So when people ask you, what are you? You say, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Who, what is your religion? Tell them I worship the Father, Jehovah, his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. That's my religion. Tell them that. So Christian is the biblical title that is acceptable in the eyes of God to describe the followers of Jesus. In Acts 26, verse 28, it says there, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. So it was accepted among all people living then that this is what the people who followed Christ were called. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. Peter writes there, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. And so there's nothing else in this Bible that describes the followers of Christ. You will not find Catholic, Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah's Witness, where well, you'll find the word Baptist, but not describing a denomination or follower of Christ. That word Baptist is describing John the Baptizer. So there's no other word or title you will find that's biblical to describe the followers of Jesus Christ. We are not supposed to belong to the, any denomination. We are simply followers of Jesus Christ and worshipers of the one true God. That's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton 1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630 Four four one four five six three. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly and this ministry. 
I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, bartonaaronporter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. It's godwear.store. So please check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.